Hello again, peeps. Right, today I'm running out of ideas, I'm running out of things to film. So today I'm going to show you how I take these outside parts of motors apart. They're pretty simple. I just snip through one side of the coil, like that, using my wire snips. I use cable shears, I don't use pliers, I don't use side cutters, I use cable shears. Love them, I think they're the best thing since sliced bread. I think I've told you that before. They're good at going through iron cable, as in ironing balls, because they go through the outer cloth sheath. Cut through both bits of it. Other side. Sometimes it's easier to use a uh, pair of pliers. And if it's a soft coil like this, this, co this these are not laminated together. Sometimes you get the coils and they're laminated together and they're a right pain in the ass to get out. But these, nice and soft. There you go. There's one of them out. Give it a bit of a twist. There's the other one out. Bit of iron to go in the latest microwave you can take the paper off it all depends on how picky your yard is my yard doesn't like plastic on it so I cut that off no cable ties cut the shipping off and that goes in the VIR and that's that nice and clean Bit of number two, goes in my number two bag. These little off cuts go in the VIR. I always throw the little off cuts in the VIR. Same as when I cut the plugs off. I always make sure I cut right up to the plug. That way you give the extra bit of weight of the plastic to the uh, scrap yard. They don't mind, so I don't care. Now, we've got these transformers. There are two main types you get. You've got this type, which is welded. And all I do with that is I'm not going to show you now because I haven't got my vice handy. I put it on the floor. A few smacks around the weld. I told you I wouldn't show you and then I started. That's actually starting to go. See? The weld started to give way. It's starting to fall apart. Perfect. I didn't think that would work that well, but it did. Then what I would usually do is put it in a vise. Well, obviously I haven't got a vise in this garage, as I told you before. It's in my other garage. So you can either hold the metal and knock the copper out the middle. If you feel you need to wear gloves, feel free, as I've said before. PPE costs money, skin grows back for nothing. But anyway, I would knock that out. Maybe lever it out. It's not going to go. It's going to take a good hammering, this is. It's going to be a pain in the ass because it's started. Anyway, hammer that out. I'm not going to bother staying here hammering it out for hours. Maybe I am. I'm very good at telling you what I'm not going to do and then doing it, aren't I? Comes to years of marriage, I suppose. Telling you, telling you you're not going to do that, you're going to do what you want and then doing what she wants anyway. Anyway, you hammer it out. If you've got a vice, you put it in a vice, you give it a good smack in the middle, it separates. Then you're left with a big plastic piece of a coil of wire in it. All I do Get the cable shears, cut through the whole lot. Both sides, open it up. And there it is, stripped. Well, apart from the bits I've missed anyway. But you get the idea. You don't have to be subtle with it, you don't have to sit there unscrewing stuff, you know. It's scrap. Hit it with a blooming great hammer. Preferably a brick hammer because I like them. 
But that's uh, me and the MFUs for you. We seem to have a thing for brick hammers. Now this other type. This can be these can be easy, but now I've decided to show you they probably won't. But what I do is the very first E section I like to bend up and get it to the point where I can grip it with a pair of pliers. And pull it out and this time it's going to break and make me out to be a liar i love it when they do that don't you nine times out of ten this section would just pull out and it'll all be lovely and easy but no now it's on video there we go there we go pull it out see once you've pulled it out the next one will be that little bit easier again. Bend the sides over, grip it with a pair of pliers. See, now you're making a gap. Now all these plates are getting looser. Move down to the next one. These are sharp by the way, so you know, take care. Wear gloves entirely up to you. Now when they get to that point, rather than keep pulling them out, which you can do, what I like to do, Grab hold of the coil. See how it all falls apart? Now obviously some of these you're going to find are lacquered and stuck apart. These have been sitting and rusting and the rust has got in between the leaves and it's pushed them apart. See how that's just for that? See? See how simple that was? Then you pull your sides off you're left with your copper coil. What I showed you before, get your cable shears, cut through your copper cable. I'm not sure if these are going to come apart, they look like it. Cut through your copper cable. Peel it off, throw it in your number two bag, bucket, or bag in my case. Now, of course, when you're not wearing gloves, you're going to get your splodge of blood everywhere. But if it leaks out, your body makes new stuff. That's how you become immune to things. My granddad always used to swear by only washing twice a week. He was taught that in the army. If you get too clean, you start catching diseases. That's what he always told me. That's why I've always been a mucky sod. That's probably why my nan always used to tell me to wash behind my ears. Apparently he used to have potatoes growing in them. There you go. That's how simple it is. All this goes in the microwave. And then my scrap man comes and takes it, because as I've said to you before, I don't take in light iron. Can't be bothered. Taking light iron, I have to do it every week and then I'm going to need a scrap metal dealer's license, which I don't want to pay out for. So I work around it, as I say. At the moment, my scrap man, he's going to come and pick up probably about a ton from me. The front half of this garage is absolutely full to the brim with microwaves. And I get to keep all the good stuff. But I think it's good stuff. I've got this thing about copper. I don't know what it is about copper. I think I got it from watching them in uh, E Waste Ben. He's always on about his copper. Price of copper to the moon, copper stacking, copper bars, copper this, copper that. Although I must admit, the very first scrap run I ever did when I was 13 years old was copper pipe and brass taps. And ever since then, I've just loved the colour of it. Better than gold, actually. I always find gold a bit gaudy to be perfectly honest. I do like the, the colour of copper. And proper gold actually. I like gold when you pan it out of a river. When you see it in there and it's not all nice and shiny like you see gold paint is, which looks perfectly honest, quite terrible. Proper gold isn't C3PO. Proper gold is a nice satin finish. 
And then again, I'm strange like that. I prefer satin paints on vehicles as well. That's what makes it saves you having to wash them. It doesn't show the dents up quite as much. I think if I could have a satin finish to uh, my skin, I'd go with that as well. Save me having to wash quite so often. Not really. Anyway, there's a pile of scrap I'll get rid of. And there's a pile of copper I'm going to finish peeling off and throw in my number two copper bag. Like this, peeps. Right, back again, peeps, because I've found one that is not quite as rusty and is tightly laminated. And I'm wearing PPE, because this one's sharp. And as much as I don't mind my skin growing back, I've got a roast dinner in about half hour. I don't want to be going indoors, smearing blood everywhere, and be putting band-aids on when I could be eating a nice roast chicken dinner and roast tatties. Anyway, I've totally missed out what I was going to say then. Right, when these laminates are stuck closer together, I use a standing blade. Prize them apart. You can slide it in between the laminate, just bend the edges up. They don't stick very, very well, but sometimes they stick well enough so they don't fall apart like the last one. However, once you get them going, you will usually find that as soon as I start recording, they don't come out. <laughs> you will usually find that once you've broken the edges, there you go, did you hear that pop? As soon as it popped, that was the glue or the lacquer from in between the plates letting go. This side isn't going to have it, so we'll go back to this side. And I'll carry on with the Stanley blade, getting it underneath, popping the glue off. Once you've popped the eyepiece off, you can then bend up the ears of the E. These are called I and E, or I call them I and E. Not A and E, that's where I end up when I don't wear my PPE. See how easy that came out? Not as easy as the last one, but this one's still quite freshly glued. Usually I leave them out for a while. They get a bit rusty. As soon as the rust starts to form between these plates, it pops the lacquer. And you saw how easy that last one came apart. This one's a bit fresher. I only took it apart yesterday. I didn't have time to, there we go. Did you hear that pop again? I don't know if you can hear that. I can hear it quite clearly. Let's give that a little tap through. See if we can't loosen off that other end plate because that's sticking out and it's all kinds of sharp. There you go, pop, away she goes. After you've done a few of these, you can start the old smacking it with a hammer routine. Things will, may start falling off, but when you get to these fresher ones, where you're having to run the Stanley knife in to pop the glue apart, they tend not to fall apart quite so easily. I'll get another couple out just to loosen up the pack. And then we'll see. See if I can hear that pop. Hear that? That little crack? That was the glue giving way. Obviously I've knocked the pack down on this side, so it's tightened up again. After a while you can start bending them up with your fingers. If you're not too worried about cutting the crack out yourself. Right, let's have a look. Let's see if we can loosen some of these eyes up. Smack the ends, and you'll notice as you hit it, they start to walk up and out, and you can just tap them out. I usually swap ends, and you can just pull them apart. The more that fall out, the looser the pack's going to get. Remember, these are just the eyes you're removing, not the E's. But you take out the eyes. I call them eyes because they're an eye section, and I call the other ones E's because they're a E section. The more you take out, the looser and easier the rest come out. If like this, they come out but they're a bit caught a bit, just catch it with the back of your hammer. Drag them out. Eventually you'll get to the point where you've got no eyes left, and then you've got ears, nose and throat. Ha oh, ha No, sorry. And then you can turn to this side, and you can. 
work your way around, keep turning it over. Eventually, not only will the eyes pop out, but so will the ease. Once it starts to get that loose, you'll find if you hold on to the plastic, not the metal, because you're hitting the metal. See how easy that's falling out? Once you've loosened it up, it really does become quite easy to strip. Even if it doesn't come out that easy, you can always go back to popping the plates and pulling them out with the pliers. Now usually what happens is, if you hit down, the ones that release are the ones you're hitting. We pop back up, like on the rebound. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in, there's no set order. This is scrapping. You're pulling crap apart. You don't have to be neat about it, you don't have to be tidy. You just need the end product. It's not like you're taking something apart to put it back together again. In fact, it's probably almost totally the opposite of being a mechanic, which is what I spent the past 38 years doing. So it's quite nice to uh, be let loose of a hammer, knowing I'm not the Charlie Muggins who's got to put it back together again. Anyway, that's the general idea. I'm not going to stand here bashing this and making a, another boring video about doing what I did on the last video. There you go. That's how I take those apart, even wearing PPE. Right, it's peeps.